Married at First Sight and After Party, Season 18, Episode 6. So the couples are in the last few days of their honeymoons. And once again, we're in another season where the couples intermingle with each other more than they should. Hi, I'm Tamara, and this is Tamara Lynette Tales. So it looks like After Party is going to be an hour now. I thought they were giving us a couple of extra long ones to kick off the season, but here we are on episode six, and it's still an hour. Anyway, the first part featured Wancho Michelle and podcaster Laterris. Keisha kept asking him to give the cast advice. They shrugged it off because After Party is taped after Decision Day. Talk about a day late and a dollar short. Anyway, the second portion, Keisha had Alan and Camille. Now let's get into the Michelle and David show. Now to the confessional cam, Michelle said, I need to come to grips with the fact I didn't get the husband I wanted. And David didn't get the wife he wanted Miss Judgment Day. You're no Macy's Day Parade either. She went on to say, I need to be kinder to myself and I don't want to keep fighting with David every day. He's not a bad guy. Girl, you need to be kinder to David, the coat check lady, the Uber driver, that dog that crossed your path while you were at the taco stand, your optometrist, and me. Your bad attitude is offending everybody. How are you making this just about yourself? Now, when she was talking to David, another Michelle red flag flew up. She said, I have a hard time asking for help. I don't want help. Okay, so she puts up walls, shuts down, and doesn't want to ask for or receive help. That sounds like someone who needs to work on themselves, experts. Neither she nor David appear to be in a position to be married. So Michelle has finally decided she's going to try to have fun. On After Party, Keisha asked Michelle, what took you so long to decide to have fun? She said she woke up every day saying she was going to have fun. Then something would happen. Something would happen. Like David walking and breathing at the same time. <laughs> anyway, she said something would happen to send her right back to being a douchebag. She also said, it never occurred to me someone our age still lives at home. I'll give her that one in terms of not expecting to be matched with someone who hasn't conquered rent yet. You don't need a matchmaker to find that person. Now back to after party, she said growing up, her home life was a struggle. She grew up in a small town where the school had bring your tractor to school day. <laughs> okay. I didn't even know that was a thing. So when she hears David saying he lives at home, she thinks of the struggle of her childhood. So basically Keisha was able to get her to admit that David living at home is a trigger for her. So in an attempt to step into her funness, Michelle and David went paddleboarding and appeared to have a decent time. I mean, there were laughs and she was only a little bit snarky. Then they took a sushi class. So after Michelle made one, she encouraged David to do it. Then, of course, she passed judgment on him to the confessional cam. She said, I see David doesn't do much out of his comfort zone, but he tried. He's doing a good job. But when she said he's doing a good job, her voice went up like three octaves. He's doing a good job. <laughs> it was like she was forcing herself to say something nice. I see you. Fake it till you make it, girl. However, on After Party, she did say that he's a great guy and has a great sense of humor. So there's that. Anyway, they were eating and David asked her what the name of one of the sauces was. She told him and he said, oh, I can f with that. Michelle said, do you normally cuss a lot? I do. I do. If you could reel that in a bit, that would be my preference. Oh, I can do that. I'm, I'm still learning you. So what she's asking for isn't a bad thing, but unfortunately, since she's been so bitchy, everything she says comes across as mean at this point. They ended up having a decent conversation. We finally got to hear her ask David a normal get to know you type of question. She asked if his grandfathers were still alive. Both sets of her grandparents have passed away and, and David says he still has both of his. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Something's screaming at me right now. Michelle has on a gang of necklaces, but no Ana Luisa jewelry. You've heard me rave about Ana Luisa before. My necklaces, Ana Luisa. Earrings, you guessed it, Ana Luisa. This is my go-to brand. How is she not cut on yet? Mm -mm, we need to talk. If you've never heard of Ana Luisa, uh, let me put you on because you are missing out. They are a sustainable jewelry brand based in New York. Their pieces are gorgeous. The quality, mwah, top notch. And the best part? They don't tarnish like ever, and you're not breaking the bank to look cute. 
affordable queen energy okay look at this necklace it's super cute right and these earrings two-tone genius i can mix gold and silver in one piece decisions i don't know her anymore i'm out here living my best you can't tell me nothing life honestly Anna Luisa just gets me and can we talk about the packaging my Anna Luisa jewelry always arrives in these adorable little boxes it's like unboxing a gift from a bougie best friend who actually cares about the planet you can really tell a lot about a company by how they package their items and Anna Luisa 10 out of 10 every single time oh and a pro tip hit up their best sellers page that's where i find pieces that everyone is obsessed with oh and guess what anna Luisa's black friday sale is live right now get up to 35 percent off stunning jewelry pieces but the sale is only available for a limited time make sure you click on the link in my description so they know i sent you and by the way michelle the next time you wear 18 necklaces don't let me catch you with no anna Luisa. Now, after party, Michelle said she thinks David is attractive, but his living situation is unattractive and he doesn't seem to have a move out plan and doesn't appear to be saving his money so he can move out. So remember I said earlier in the season that David might be giving Michelle broke energy. I think I might be right. It's sounding like his money is funny. That is not cute. Later, when they were packing up to prepare to fly home and talking about moving in together, he said their opposite schedules will probably be a good thing. She works nine to five and he works two to ten. OK, so basically you guys will never see each other. But David, why are you even trying to plan with this woman as if she's been into you the whole time? At this point, David seems to be willing to take any raggedy piece of a marriage Michelle is willing to give him. Dude, let it go. Move on. She has. Anyway, so he was saying something about being careful not to wake her up when he was getting up early and coming in late. And Michelle says, I'm not ready to share bed with you. Why? I'm not feeling a connection here, so I need more time. David, 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 come on, man. Michelle is barely to the point of being able to say your name without throwing up in her mouth. Surely she's not ready to play footsie with you in bed yet. Now, on the flight home, David sat in a different row than Michelle. Now, on the show, he said it was so they can both have window seats. But on After Party, Camille said David was trying to give Michelle some space. So, David, clearly you know Michelle doesn't want to be around you. What are you hoping to gain from the situation at this point? But at the end of the episode, Michelle was talking about moving in together. However, I think she's just saying that for the cameras. At the very least... I imagine she'll go back to her own place for a while to recuperate from marrying Basement Man before moving into the shared apartment. At this point, the only reason David should try to spend time with Michelle is to be in the episode so he can get paid. Even then, the only thing he should be trying to get from Michelle is an annulment. MM and Chi Chi. With these two, I'm just waiting for some authenticity. Right now, I feel like Chi Chi has sent his representative on this show. Now, I'm not saying there's a bad guy underneath. I'm saying there's a different guy underneath. And I want to see what he's like. Now, in the meantime, he and his homie, a.k.a. his wife, a.k.a. M.M., were having conversations about love because he's being deep and asking the hard-hitting questions he thinks men should ask when they're on a TV show about marriage. So they both said they've been in love before. He asked her, how do you want to be loved? And she said that she likes affection. When it comes to kids, he said he's broken it off with someone before because she didn't want to have kids. Then he asked his homie if she wanted any. She hesitantly said she's open to it. That felt like a soft no to me. So it's kind of weird. They keep bringing up how they are eventually going to have problems in their marriage. And they want to see how they work through them. Careful what you ask for, homies. This show paired you two together for one reason. To give us viewers your drama to watch. Trust and believe you are not a good match. And once you find that out, you'll understand what I mean. Now, later, they were getting ready for bed and talking about what a good day they had. He said, you know what I can't wait to do? And she said, what? Hit them sheets. I'm tired. Really, Mr. Duckoff? That's what you were talking about when you were being so braggadocious to the group on day one of the honeymoon. Can't wait to be alone with your wife so you can get your REM sleep in, huh? 
Anyway, the hotel staff left some honey sticks on the bed as part of their turndown service. M.M. was trying to be seductive with it and sucking on it in a way that let Chi-Chi know what her lips look like around a magic stick. Shout out to Carla. Then Chi-Chi leaned in and said something like, mm, can you do something for me? Hit that light switch. Then quickly turned his back to her and dove under the covers like a true homie would. He wasn't stunning her in her seductive moment. She was even trying to spoon him by being the big spoon. And he was playfully telling her to get off of him because his mama is going to see this. Sometimes I just want to fast forward through their scenes until they feel more genuine. I don't know. Maybe once they get back to Chicago, have to work and navigate friends and each other for weeks, the realness will start to show. For now, I'm done talking about them. Camille and Tom, they took salsa lessons from Adriana and Adriana would count out the steps. One, two, three, and five, six, seven, eight. And Tom was so serious. He was trying to do the steps on his own and you could see him mouthing the count. One, two, three, and five, six, seven, eight. I thought it was cute. I like Tom. He really seems to be trying from what they've shown us anyway. So Camille, on the other hand, I was a little disappointed in her. To the confessional cam, she said he's not her typical type. She's used to someone who's a little more R&B. You got your nerve, Miss Caramel Chocolate over there. For those of you who don't understand her point, she was basically saying that Tom isn't black enough for her. And later, they apparently had a talk about it in their room. Tom had his face all up in the camera upset because they had a conversation and Camille said he's not the type she would normally go for because of their upbringings. He wasn't in touch with his black culture. He said he's heard it before, but this time he took it more seriously because it's marriage, you know? So I felt bad for Tom because he really seems to be trying with Camille. But I mean, let's face it, he can't be Usher when he's really Garth Brooks. Later, he told Camille that growing up, he had a hard time fitting in because he was biracial. But his father told him to be himself. So that's what he does. And he's not trying to impress anybody. Good for you. Now, Camille seemed to empathize with him, claiming she never had to deal with that growing up. Good for you. I've heard brown biracial friends say that they've had trouble fitting in, whether they are black and Hispanic, Hispanic and white. Each group will say they're not Hispanic enough or black enough or white enough, what have you. Anyway, when they returned to their room after a group dinner, Tom asked her to stay outside for a minute. He said he was a little sweaty and wanted to freshen up. Now, at first, that excuse didn't make sense to me. But on after party, they mentioned the bathrooms have glass walls. They can see each other shower, use the toilet, zero privacy. Anyway, Tom went into the room to quickly spread rose petals on the bed and floor, which was super sweet. But on the other hand, I was thinking someone from production got the rose petals for him, then wondered if this was even his idea or theirs. So it ruined the moment for me. I went from thinking this was sweet to being a little salty about it because it started to feel fake. When Camille came in, he told her he wanted to recreate their wedding night and she gave him a lukewarm response at best. Oh, this is cute. This is cute. And how did she repay his romantic gesture? By coming out in her, I'm not trying to have sex with you oversized sleep shirt. Now, after party, she said after the rose petal reveals, they went somewhere that night. When they came back, there was an army of ants all over the rose petals. She said they were literally carrying the rose petals away. (laughs) Gross. So to the confessional cam, Camille said, She's struggling a little bit with Tom being different from what she's used to, but feels he might teach her how she can be loved differently. I will give it to Camille that even though she's struggling, she appears to be working through it and still trying to get to know Tom. I like Tom. He feels like a gentle spirit who really is trying to find love and be loved. Now, one thing I noticed, which is completely off topic, he is wearing two wedding bands, but I haven't heard him address it. I wonder if the black band is to keep the one below it from falling off because it's too big. I don't know. Anyway, I don't get the impression Camille is struggling with physical attraction when it comes to Tom. I just think she needs him to add a little more chicken grease some more peach cobbler, some deep fried chitlins, you know, to his personality. 
Carla and Wancho. The episode started with Wancho and David having a bro date. They went to a spa, hung out afterwards, and got some good bonding in. Later, Wancho took Carla out for a romantic lunch on the water. He asked about her day, and she said, I took some time for myself today. I've been taking in everyone's energy, and it feels low. It feels like pressure, and that's why I needed to just unwind. Meanwhile, Wancho's looking at her smiling and half listening because he can't wait to tell her about his date with David. I'm not going to lie. I forgot you were there because I was having so much fun with David and living it up. Wancho, why on earth would you tell someone who is not your enemy that you forgot about them? Nobody wants to hear that especially your wife and the mother of your future Wanchitos. Carla said, you forgot about me? I was just in a moment. Clearly, Carla did not appreciate his comment, but she moved on. She asked, what do you like in a relationship? He said not to take it so serious. People get caught up in little things and need to not take them so serious. You know, Carla said, mm-hmm. So later, Carla was walking and feeling really salty about Wancho's comments. Earlier today, my husband took me out on a romantic dinner on the ocean front, and he said, you know what, Carla? Earlier today, I totally forgot about you. I didn't even think about you once. I was so in love with David. We were just having a moment. So her revenge was to tell him to meet her for breakfast after he went swimming, but he didn't bring an extra bag for wet clothes and she wouldn't allow him to use her bag, which meant he would have to find a bag to put his wet clothes in and walk around with it. That was so lame and lacked imagination, really. So Carla said, I'm thinking the moral of this story is don't forget about Carla or you're going to have to have a bag to put your things in forever. Don't forget about Carla. Why is walking around carrying a bag with wet clothes a big deal? And why couldn't he just go back to their room and drop off the clothes? I failed to see the vengeance in this little scenario, even though it was petty. On After Party, Wancho said after he went swimming, he didn't have a bag to put his clothes in, so he went to the front desk. Now, they didn't have one, so they asked housekeeping for one, and they gave him the clear bag that looked like a prison bag. So he shows up to the restaurant with his little prison bag, and Carla and Madison were sitting at the table. So I guess it was a table for two. So he had to sit at a different table and eat by himself. So the whole time, Carla barely acknowledged his existence because she was too busy being a petty Paula. For someone who manages energy, I would say this was a low energy move, Carla. Anyway, watch the story doesn't end there. They left the restaurant and did their thing for a while, right? Then he realized he forgot his bag in the restaurant. So after he remembered, they went back to retrieve it and it wasn't there. It took them almost the entire day to track it down. This scene we saw where he's holding the bag was after they finally found it. So it sounds like this little bag situation backfired because he and Carla wasted half the day trying to find the stupid bag. That's like instant karma. So later they went on a photo shoot, but to the confessional cam, Carla said, I'm struggling a little bit because I'm still waiting for him to apologize. So she forced herself to go through with the photo shoot. There was a moment when she was supposed to go under the water while Wancho laid on his stomach and ducked his face under the water. So she was struggling to stay underwater. I think the photographers were used to working with women who were a little thicker because the water kept pushing Carla up. If that were me and my thick self, I would have sunk to the bottom. Anyway, she was getting frustrated and said she was over it. And Wancho was very attentive and concerned. But I was wondering, why didn't they just switch places? Why couldn't he be in the water and Carla peek her face under? Regardless, Carla agreed to try again and they were able to get the shot. Doesn't look like a good quality shot to me, but I guess it's more about the experience and posting it on TikTok than it is about the quality. Now, an after party, Wancho said when Carla is feeling anxious, she hugs trees. During the photo shoot, she was hugging a tree and someone said, you may not want to hug these trees. Some of them have poisonous bark. Uh-oh. Carla, clearly you don't have what it takes to make it on Naked and Afraid. Now, later they were in their room and she brought up him forgetting about her in a petty Paula type way. 
He called her out, though. He said it's hard to communicate with people when they communicate in a passive aggressive kind of way. He schooled her and said, if he says something wrong, don't hold it in. Say something to let him know. Like, how can I fix it if you don't tell me? After you repeated what I said back to you, it was kind of harsh. On after party, he took it a little further and even said he sounded like an a-hole. He even looked in the camera and said, don't ever say that. It will only get you in the doghouse. But why did you need this to happen to learn that, though? So Carla and Wancho went on to talk about moving in to their shared apartment together. And Carla said when they move in together, he will have to leave the house when she has to use the bathroom. He said, I'll go to the gym. Girl, get over yourself. If this man has never smelled poop before, he has much bigger problems than the stench of yours. Carla told him when she gets home, she needs to decompress for 30 minutes. So, like, don't talk to her. And Wancho did the right thing. He made fun of her. So when I come home, I'm just supposed to. <laughs> he was quiet. He said, that's weird to me. I think Carla is starting to build her case as to why she needs to be a stay-at-home wife. She's not built for nine-to-five work life. Hence her needing to decompress for an entire 30 minutes every day. I think Carla is about to get on Wancho's nerves. Madison and Alan, they participated in a cleansing ceremony where they, with no grace whatsoever, dumped water on each other's heads. Now, hopefully they remembered not to swallow, don't drink the water. Montezuma's revenge is real, y'all. So they laid hands on each other's hearts. Well, Alan's were more on her boobs, though, I think. Meanwhile, the spirit guy said some stuff to them. Now, to the confessional cam, Madison said she's not much into physical touch, but it was good for them to continue to push through. Madison, you claim to like a man who is fit and fine. What's the point of catching a fit and fine man if you're not going to touch him? Girl, if you don't go sit down somewhere. Anyway, the spirits guys gave them both a reading. She basically told Alan that he talks too much. And she told Madison she's a strong woman, but different on the outside. She needs to communicate more, but Alan needs to shut up so she can. I can't say that I blame Alan for talking over Madison because it seems like when she does talk in a polite tone, she tends to criticize him. I'd talk over her too. However, I will say a moment where he really needed to heed the spirit guide's advice was during the group dinner. They were all going around the circle, speculating on what the future will be and what things will be like once they get back to Chicago and live together. The same conversation we've heard every season. We are in paradise now, but I'm nervous about how we will get along when we get back to our normal lives. I'm struggling a little bit with attraction. I don't want to walk her dog. Blah, blah, blah. So Alan expressed concern about getting on Madison's nerves because I cough a lot when I wake up in the morning. I tend to have a lot of phlegm. Will that eventually bother her? Phlegm? Really, Alan? Here you are sitting next to your wife who is not attracted to you and you're going to talk about your morning phlegm situation? Who wants to kiss a phlegm mouth? Ugh. Meanwhile, once they got back to Chicago, Madison couldn't wait to share her thoughts that she was able to come up with during the flight. She said she prefers someone who takes care of themselves so they look and feel good and would like him to work out. Ouch! He kept a straight face and took Madison's insult in like a champ. I would have said, love me, love my gut. Now pass me your cookie if you're not going to eat it. But Alan was nice about it and said he does work out, but not regularly when he's lifting a drill or balancing in a different position to put a part on a car. I think that's kind of a stretch, Alan. Madison said, I want to see more of that. Madison, you've been on vacation since you've met Alan. Maybe he is active in his normal day-to-day -day life. Simmer down and get to know him. But wait, there's more. Then she told him that she doesn't like the way he dresses. She's not trying to dog out his style, but I'm just telling you what I find attractive and what might help a little bit. So basically, she's trying to mold him into the type of man she normally dates. The same men who don't want to marry her because there's always someone better along the horizon. Then, to add salt to the wound, on their first night in the apartment, she left Alan home alone to go to happy hour. Three hours later, we see Alan sitting in the hot tub by himself, all pitiful like. Now, an after party, he said he met two German ladies at the hot tub. They hung out and drank together. I think they were a little older, but he said he would have rather been with his wife. 
at this point, I think Madison is only there to finish out her obligation to the show. She's done. There's nothing to see here, folks. Now, next week, they visit each other's homes. I can't wait to get the HGTV tour of David's basement. This is going to be good. In the meantime, that's all I have for now. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in my next video.